Good afternoon everyone. My name is Ashlan Sajid Raja and I'm a PhD student at Laboratory of Tonic and Quantum Measurement which is led by Professor Tobias Kippenberg at EPFL. This project is done in collaboration with System and Networking Group that is led by Dr. Hitesh Blani at Microsoft Research Cambridge. The title of my talk is Ultra Fast Optical Circuit Switching for Data Center Using Integrated Soliton Microcom. First, I would like to give a short motivation for our work by emphasizing why there is a need for optical circuit switching. The figure shows a multi-tier architecture of current data center in which different servers are interconnected with the help of electronic switch and optical fiber as indicated by black line. The data is converted from electrical domain into the optical domain and from optical domain back into the electrical domain by using the small devices known as optical transceivers. These optical transceivers are power hungry and consume a lot of power. As the data flowing into the data center is increasing with the time and also electronic switches are reaching the performance limit, there is a need to implement an alternative method to fulfill the ever increasing bandwidth requirement for the future data center. In order to solve this issue, optical based circuit switching is proposed as an alternative method. In this method, the connection between different servers can be established by using different color of the light and a switching element. For example, if this first server wants to talk to this last server, they can do it by using green color of the light. Some advantages of this particular technology are following. There will be no need of optical to electrical and electrical to optical conversion, which means less number of optical transceiver will be used inside the data center and hence the data center will be more power efficient. As this particular architecture is flat as compared to the conventional data center, there will be a better intra-server links, which are very important for certain applications such as cloud computing. The port scalability issue can be resolved as most of the component relies in this particular architecture can be fabricated at chip scale level. One of the most important element required by the optical circuit switch data center is the multivalent source, a source that can emit many color of the light. One of the simple and ideal solution is to use off the shelf tunable laser. So by changing the current and temperature in this laser, the emission color of the laser can be changed. Unfortunately, it has been demonstrated that this particular laser cannot tune or switch between different colors faster than 100 nanoseconds. More than 95% workload inside the data center is dominated by small packet due to applications such as memory disaggregation and key value storage. It is important to switch between different colors of the light faster. A small graphic shows 100 nanosecond switching time is not ideal for efficient utilization of resources inside the data center as system will remain idle or waiting during this 100 nanosecond. The data packet is 29 nanosecond considering 256 bytes are transmitted at 100 gigabit per second. This shows that optical data center requires switching less than one nanosecond for efficient resource, utiliza resource utilization which call for alternative or better solutions. Later, it was shown that in order to switch data at sub nanosecond, it is critical to use an additional element which is known as wavelength selector. Or in simple word, this technique relies on separating the switching from the multi-wavelength source. This particular method requires utilization of source which are continuously emitting the uh, single color. The bottom figure shows the concept of this scheme in which three different laser diode are emitting three different color continuously. In order to switch between th three different color, a switching element known as semiconductor optical amplifier is used. When a control signal is applied to the first SOA, the red light will be transmitted. Similarly, when a control signal will be applied to the second, second SOA, the yellow light will be transmitted. If the current is applied to the last SOA, the blue light will be transmitted and the other two will be blocked. So by applying control signal, we can select different color of the light. This has already enabled the sub nanosecond optical circuit switching, a key requirement for efficient utilization of resources inside the data center. In order to increase the number of channel in this architecture, a straightforward solution is to use an array of laser. For example, if we want to switch between 64 channel, we need 64 independent lasers. As the emission color depend on the current applied to the laser diode, and similarly temperature, this particular solution requires independent control of the temperature and current which bring additional control complexity and also it is very power consuming. The number of element will increase with the scaling which is not ideal for the data center. A more suitable and power efficient solution is to use optical frequency comb generated from optical micro generator also known as micro comb. By using a single laser which is coupled to a micro generator with the help of non linear frequency conversion we see many new color coming out of this micro generator some advantages of this solution are following we can generate more than 100 line by using a single laser diode and single micro generator which means it require only two component while 
if we consider the previous solution, it could have required more than 100 element. Similarly, by stabilizing this laser diode, we can stabilize all these lines automatically. Lot but last but not the least, wavelength alignment is very easy as the spacing between these lines is fixed. Here I want to give a quick and short overview of optical frequency comb. A single light is coupled into the microsonator using a bus waveguide. This ring structure is known as microsonator. This microsonator has a high Q factor. It means it has low propagation loss. Due to strong spatial and temporal confinement, the single light is converted into new line with the help of degenerate forward mixing. By adjusting a laser power and frequency, additional frequency components are observed, which arises due to non-degenerate forward mixing. If we adjust the laser power and frequency properly, we can observe a comb-like structure coming out of this microsonator. This figure shows a typical frequency comb spectrum with the, with the spacing between comb line is fixed. So this can be considered as a frequency ruler. This particular tool has already enabled understanding of many fundamental science and it has been used for many practical applications. One of the relevant and interesting state of optical frequency comb is dissipative Kurzweil if we design the dispersion of microsonator properly, at certain frequency detuning, we can excite this particular state. In time domain, this state corresponds to a pulse-like structure, which maintains its shape while propagating inside the microsonator. In frequency domain, the spectrum has a second hyperbolic square shape. This particular state has intrinsically low phase noise, which is criti critical for data transmission as well as, as well as for wavelength switching. As you can see, the spectrum cover whole C and L telecom band generated from a single chip. From this slide onward, I will explain all the experimental results that we have achieved. First, I want to share the soliton generation. We have used a single color laser diode that was amplified using an amplifier to mainly overcome the coupling losses. The light was coupled to a package microsonator and the microsonator were fabricated using photonic damascene process, a process that was developed in our group. This process is an industrial scale process and now provide a very low propagation losses. At a certain laser frequency detuning, we can excite a single soliton as I showed in my last slide. And this particular soliton state cover 40 nanometer 3 dB bandwidth. It means it provides 60 coherent carrier. In order to meet the power requirement level to carry out switching and the telecommunication experiment, the, the soliton spectrum was further amplified using a preamp. And we can we have achieved a comb line with the power of minus 4 dBm and with the OSNR of 34 dB. After generating the soliton, we selected a single line using Tmux. And then this single line was sent to semiconductor optical amplifier, which is a wavelength selector. And the signal was detected on the photodiode. As shown in this graph, we can turn on and off this signal at sub nanosecond time scale. This shows soliton can be used as a suitable multi-wavelength carrier for optical circuit switching. We have shown more than 25 independent channels that can be switched on and off at sub nanosecond time scale. In the next experiment, we have selected four comb channels from Soliton. By applying a control signal to four different SOA, we were able to switch four different comb channels at sub nanosecond time scale simultaneously. In real data center, it is critical to transmit information or data on top of simultaneously switch comb channel. In a system level demo, a max gender modulator is used to encode data either in NRZ or PAM4 modulation format. By plotting uh, receive optical power as a function of uh, bit error ratio, we have shown that comb based system can achieve performance below forward error correction threshold for data center for both modulation format, NRZ and PAM4. I would like to mention all these results were performed using a discrete semiconductor optical amplifier. In order to show a more compact and power efficient system, semiconductor optical amplifier, which is a wavelength selector, and AWG, which act as a MUX and DMUX, was realized on a chip scale platform. The chip was designed by Microsoft team and fabricated by Fraunhofer HHI in Germany. We showed it is possible to achieve sub nanosecond circuit switching using photonic integrated system. The top two graphs show sub nanosecond optical circuit switching between two combinations of COM channels. Afterward, we showed NRZ data transmission below forward error correction threshold using chip scale platform. We are doing further optimization in our system to perform PAM4 data transmission using these chip scale SOAs and AWG. Nevertheless, current results show the soliton can be used as a multi-wavelength source for future optically switched data centers. One of the important performance metrics in data center is power efficiency or power consumption. 
In this current experiment, we have shown the feasibility of COM as a multi-wavelength source for future optically switched data center. An optimized COM source could be shared across multiple servers instead of using a single COM source for single server. This basically provides the advantage of power sharing and reduce complexity. By using a split COM source, the electrical power consumed by a COM source for each server is around 2.57 Watt without degrading the OSNR of the COM source. But after improving some engineering expect, we believe a COM based source could prove an ideal candidate for optical circuit switch data center. Before concluding my presentation, I would like to mention solid or microcom is not limited to optical circuit switching, but it has been already used to demonstrate coherent communication with the data rate up to terabit per second, medical imaging, more recently LiDAR based demonstration, and this tool also has been used to search for the exoplanet, showing the potential of this particular tool for many technical applications. I would like to conclude my presentation by acknowledging all the co-authors who contributed in this work, especially Sophie and Kai who helped me during the experimental part and carried some measurement. Due to time limitation, I could not cover all the results. If you are interested, please ask questions or have a look at this preprint that was posted on archive last year. I also want to thank all the K-Lab team for their support and guidance. Please ask questions and thanks for your attention.